the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. If you don't know insurance, it will pay you to know the man who does. He's your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Is your problem providing for the future security of your wife and children? Assuring your children a good education? Of owning your own home free and clear years before you expected? Security after 60? Then make a date with your local representative of the Equitable Society. He's a friendly, helpful neighbor, and he knows the answers. In about 11 minutes... I'd like to tell you more about this good neighbor of yours and how he may be able to help you enjoy the many advantages and freedom from worry that come with membership in the Equitable Society. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Internal Security. Its title, His Brother's Keeper. The Federal Bureau of Investigation cooperates with all law enforcement agencies in the United States. But crime is not confined by national boundaries. Today, there are vast international conspiracies operating throughout the world. It is only by the joint efforts of your FBI, other United States agencies, and law enforcement agencies of friendly foreign countries that these conspiracies can be checked and destroyed. An arrest in New York or Chicago or Denver may in part result from something that occurred in London or Tokyo or Cape Town. But wherever the crime is discovered and punished, your FBI has acted to protect you and your home and your freedom. Tonight's FBI file opens in a medical laboratory located in a large Midwestern city. A middle-aged man stands in front of a row of caged monkeys watching the animals carefully as he makes notes on a thinly ruled tablet. Not feeling so well, huh, Rudy? You want to take a nap, is that it? Well, look at Tommy over there. He's already asleep. Uh, no. Sorry to interrupt, Professor Kemper. Yes, Mary, what is it? There's a telephone call for you. I haven't time for that now. I think the new formula is working. They're already reacting to that last inoculation. Then I'll tell Mrs. Smith you'll call her back later when you're free. Mrs. Smith? Yes, sir. Oh, well, uh, perhaps I'd better talk to her. Make a note of any change in the monkey's behavior, especially those three in the top cages. Mm. Certainly, Professor. Hello, Anna. Oh, Peter, I had to call you. I just received a letter from Carl. Carl? Yes, yes, our brother Carl. He's free. But that isn't possible. He was a prisoner behind the Iron Curtain. Yeah, he escaped, made his way to free Europe, and now he wants to come here to America. Isn't it marvelous? I've got this letter right here. I'll read it to you. No, not now, Anna. I'm very busy. But, Peter... I'll drop by your apartment tonight. We have that recording, sir. If you'll just step into this booth, I'll be glad to play it for you. Thank you. Right this way, please. There we are. Now, what is it you want, Peter? My sister got a letter this morning from our brother Carl. So? He had been in a labor camp behind the Iron Curtain, but he has escaped, and now he wants to come here. What does that to do with you? Carl knows I was a member of the party before the war. Would he expose you, his own brother? I'm not sure. We had many arguments, mostly about communism. He was violently opposed to it. I see. Too bad it had to happen now. What do you mean, George? A courier is arriving in a few days to get the results of your experiments. I'll have them ready for him. Do you know your brother's address? No. My sister must have it, though. Okay. Send it to me. George, 
I won't take part in violence. <laughs> Who said anything about violence? Perhaps a warning would be sufficient. Carl would not be frightened by words. If he comes to America, I'll try to convince him I've left the party. All right. Perhaps that's best. When the courier calls, I'll get in touch with you. Come in. Sorry I'm late, Anna. Uh, let, let me take your coat and hat. Huh? Thank you. The rubbers, huh? uh, What have you got there? Oh, here, yeah, a phonograph record. I thought you might enjoy it. Here. Yeah. I was very thoughtful of you, Peter. Where's little Carl? I, I just put him to bed. He wanted to stay up until you came, but he couldn't keep his eyes open. <laughs> sit, sit, sit down over there. I... I saved dessert to have it with you. I'll, I'll bring it in. Just coffee for me. You'll have some cake too, Peter. It's dark chocolate. <laughs> Would you believe it? Little Carl was so excited he couldn't finish dinner. Excited? About having a new uncle. You know, Peter, I'm going to ask Carl to live with me when he gets here. It's important that a boy grows up around a man, and since Paul died, I... then, then the... go, go on, go on, try the cake. Mmm. Very good. <laughs> Peter, I, I hope you and Carl won't quarrel like in the old days. Hmm? You must realize he was right about what the communists would do in Europe. Of course, Anna. And I am so glad you decided to write to him. Huh? At first I thought you were not happy that he was coming to America, but... When your secretary called and asked for an address so you could send a letter... You gave her uh, Carl's address? Why, certainly, Peter. D did you find time to write him yet? No, Anna. Not yet. Two weeks later, at the local FBI field office, Supervisor Fred Mercer shows Special Agent Jim Taylor a report. It may not directly concern us, Taylor, but we have to be sure. Yes, sir. Carl Will Barger. I'm afraid I never heard of him before. All we know is he came to European authorities ten days ago. Said he'd escaped from behind the Iron Curtain and wanted to give the authorities any information he could about conditions there. Mm -hmm. When they went to interview him, he disappeared. Any idea what happened to him? No. He'd been living alone. They searched his room, turned up a letter from his sister who lives in America. This is a copy of that letter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't give us very much. Happy is free, so is his brother. Brother's working at a medical lab in the United States doing secret experiments in medicine. Doesn't mention him by name. Oh, that's the trouble. You have a nephew named after you, Carl. Son was born on your birthday, July 4th, three years ago. Signature is Anna. There's no trace of the envelope, so we don't know where it was mailed from. Mm -hmm. Why did the European authorities get in touch with the FBI, sir? There were scraps of paper in the wastebasket in Will Barger's room. He'd had trouble answering his sister's letter. Trouble? Apparently, he was trying to say that his brother had been a communist in Europe. He shouldn't be trusted with any U.S. government secrets. You mentioned the brother by name? No. Oh. Well, then he could be working at any medical lab in the country. Yes. That's why this office was notified. The government has some important projects underway at the pharmaceutical company here. Oh, uh -huh. You'd better check their security files. Main Street Music Shop. This is Peter. Can you talk? Yes, but I may have to cut off. Why did you get that address from my sister? What address? Don't try to lie, George. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. My brother. You had someone call and find out where he's living. Why, that's nonsense. Listen to me, George. If anything should happen to Carl... You had better do the listening, Peter. I received orders for you. But you haven't answered... I can't my... explain them over the telephone. I'll meet you tomorrow afternoon. But, George, now, I want to listen to, know to me. What... Leave the lab at 5.30. Drive along the highway toward East Lake. I'll be parked near the Greenfield Cutoff. Bye. <laughs> Taylor, I've 
got something on the Wilbarger case. There's a good chance the brother is employed at the pharmaceutical house. Oh? Washington checked the watermark on the sister's letter. It's a new brand of personal stationery. It's the only city where it's been marketed so far. And the buyer had it initialed A.S. Well, that narrows down the field. Is there anything else, sir? Yes. Wilbarger's dead. Murdered? Uh-huh. The police found the body. They've tracked down the killer, too. Oh, that's good. The man who did it was a known communist agent. Well, it means a communist here could have ordered the murder to protect Wilbarger's brother so he could keep on working for the party. Yeah. What have you turned up? Well, not too much, sir. There are a dozen men at the company working on confidential medical experiments. Seven of them have sisters, but no sister named Wilbarger or even Anna. Better run a security check on all 12. Having trouble, sir? Yes, I think it's the carburetor. Guess I'm not much of a mechanic. Maybe I can give you a hand. Oh, oh thank you very much. Here, take a look. Now, these are your instructions. You're to secure all the data you can on Serum X. Did you hear me? not been working on Serum X. You can get the papers describing it, can't you? I suppose so. I'll photograph them with this pencil camera. The courier will arrive tomorrow night. He'll only stop off for a few hours between planes, so the information must be ready. I'll let you know where to make delivery. Everything clear? Yes. Well, then, I suggest you leave. Wait. About my brother. I didn't call for his address. But my sister said We've someone called... We've settled call... that. Now, thanks for being good Samaritan. Bye. We will return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Right now, I'd like to ask you this. Is your family protected by the right kind of life insurance? What is the right kind of life insurance? Perhaps Mr. James Furness can help you find out. What was your problem, Mr. Furness, before you became a member of the Equitable Life Assurance Society? I was worried about what would happen to my wife and children, Mr. Keating, if something happened to me. You see, I don't make big money. I know my Social Security would help, but that just isn't enough. So when I heard you talk about a plan that would keep them well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed until my youngest boy got through high school, well, I was certainly interested. That's our equitable family security plan. It really lives up to its name. I found that out after I called up our local equitable man and talked it over with him. Now, there's a man your company can be proud of. Well, we're proud of all our equitable representatives, Mr. Furness. They try to be friendly and helpful. And they do know what they're talking about, too. I'd like to tell everybody that it's good business to do business with an equitable representative. That's good advice. You see, equitable men are, first of all, interested in your problem and how they can help you solve it. Everybody really should have a sound life insurance plan. But if you don't know much about life insurance, ask the man who does know, your local equitable representative. You'll be glad you called him. Simply consult your local telephone directory for the name of this friendly, helpful neighbor, your local representative of the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, His Brother's Keeper. A vast proportion of time and effort spent on each case which your FBI investigates is devoted to questioning and routine details. But that is the only way cases can be solved. So if at any time a special agent of your FBI or a representative of any law enforcement office should seek your cooperation, it is important that you comply to the best of your ability. When you are satisfied that the person questioning you has the necessary authority... Answer all questions honestly and completely. To you, a question may seem unimportant or trivial, but you don't have all the facts. No honest person need fear the whole truth. Remember, if your FBI is to do a job for you, you must help them do it. 
Tonight's FBI file continues the next morning at the local FBI field office. Special Agent Taylor has just entered the office of Supervisor Mercer. Here are some brief facts on those 12 men at the pharmaceutical house, Mr. Mercer. Oh, thanks. Any leads show up? Well, I thought I had something on a chemist who calls himself Barker. His real name is Bostoff, but the record's clear. What about the others? Only one of them is European. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Professor Peter Kemper, born in Munich. Uh, I talked to his secretary. She says he frequently gets calls from a Mrs. Smith. She doesn't know the woman's first name, but the initials on that stationery were A.S. Anna Smith. All right. Better see what else you can find out about Professor Kemper. Anna? What are you doing here? I had to see you. I I called your secretary. She told me you were out to lunch that you usually ate here. Uh, May I sit down? I'm almost finished. I don't want to be late getting back to the plant. No, this will only take a moment. Peter, I received another letter from Carl this morning. I thought you'd want to know. What does he want? He needs money to come to America. At least $500. I have 300 to send him, but I can't raise the rest. I'm sorry, Anna. I wish I could help you, but I can't. You make a very good salary, Peter. You know me. I never save anything. Then you could borrow. Carl would pay you back. What would I borrow on? Peter, you really don't want Carl to come here, do you? May I take your order? Uh, 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 Just coffee, please. Coming up. Anna... I want Carl to come to America. But if I don't have the money, I don't have it. What can I do? You have the money. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. You're afraid of what Carl knows about you. What are you talking about, Anna? He wrote me that you were a communist in Europe. Oh, well, what he means is I I sympathized with their aims when I was young. That's all. Carl says you are actually a member of the party. He can prove it. Anna, you must not say that to anyone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Here, here's my napkin. Anna, I was a member of the party once, but only for a few months. It was many, many years ago. Did you tell them about it when you went to work at the laboratory? No, of course not. I couldn't. I bought my passport on the black market in Europe. That's why I have to use the name of Kemper. If the authorities found out I entered the country illegally, I would be deported. Here's your coffee, lady. Uh, Thank you. You You must listen to me, Anna. You must try to understand. I have done what I think is right. If anything should happen now, if the people at the plant find out about me, my work would be over. My whole life would be for nothing. Carl would understand. He wouldn't want you to hurt me. Why should I protect you and you will do nothing to help him? I was telling you the truth before. I don't have the money now. I even owe some bills. But give me a few days. I'll try to raise it. Please. All right, Peter. I trust you. Thank you, Anna. Mercer speaking. Miss Taylor, Mr. Mercer, I got a message to call you. Yes, where are you? County Courthouse. Oh? I'm checking a lead on the Wilbarger case. I've got something on that, too. A teletype came from Washington. We have a reliable tip that a communist courier has arrived in the United States. He's looking for medical research information. Oh, I see. They've sent along a fairly complete description. You can pick it up when you get back here to the office. Good. I think I've had some luck here. You remember the sister's letter? Sure. She said her three-year-old son was born on July 4th, named Carl. Yes, Well, the birth records show 87 babies born on that particular day. One of the mothers was named Smith, and her maiden name was Wilbarger. Where does she live? It's an apartment house on 82 Brockton Avenue. You'd better get over there. Mrs. Smith? Uh, Yes? I'm Special Agent Taylor of the FBI. Here are my credentials. Oh, oh uh, come in, please. Thank you. Uh, won't you won't you sit down? Yes, thanks. There are a few questions I'd like to ask you about a man named Peter Kemper. Peter Kemper? We believe his real name is Wilbarger. Why are you asking me about him? 
Well, he is your brother, isn't he? I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor. I can't answer your questions. You have another brother, Carl? How... How did you know that? We were able to trace a letter that you wrote him. But... But... But Carl is in Europe. Mrs. Smith, I... I don't like to tell you this, but your brother Carl is dead. Dead? You, you must be mistaken. He was murdered last Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> Can I get you a glass of water? Or... No, no. No, thank you. You, you, you said murdered? That's right, ma'am. But, but, but why? He was killed by the communists to keep him from revealing the identity of a party member here in this country. <laughs> man who's providing secret medical information to an Iron Curtain government. You don't think that Peter... He is your brother. Yes. And a communist. I... I don't know. I, I talked to him today at noon. He told me he had been a communist once, but he swore he left the party years ago. Mm -hmm. He asked you to keep this a secret? That is why I did not want to answer your questions. Peter said he would be deported. He wanted to finish his experiments. Yes, I'm sure he did. But he couldn't have been responsible for Carl's death. Carl was his brother. He knew where Carl was in Europe. Oh, I called him as soon as I heard it. Uh -huh. Smith, uh, may I use your telephone, please? Of course. I, I show you. Thank you. You're going to have him arrested? No. No, not yet. I just want to make sure that he doesn't leave the laboratory. May I help you, sir? Yes, if you will. My name is Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Oh, yes. Your associate is in that room there. You may go right in. Oh, thanks. Mr. Mercer? Hmm? Oh, come in, Jim. Have you talked to the... Well, that's Professor Kemper. What happened? He was leaving the plant as you called. The watchman made him return, told him it was for security reasons. Mm -hmm. He came back here to his office. A few minutes later, he put a bullet through his head. Do you think the courier had already contacted him? Oh, I doubt it. This morning, he asked his secretary to send for all the reports on Ceramax. Well, that isn't what Kemper was working on. No, but it's the most important assignment the company has right now. Mm -hmm. She sent him the reports? No, he called her after lunch and told her he didn't want them. What's, uh, what's that gadget there? Hmm? Oh, pencil camera. Oh. It was in his desk. The film inside hasn't been exposed. Sounds like he was planning to photograph the Ceramex formulas and something changed his mind. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. I wonder what happened. Well, he talked to his sister at noon. Maybe that had something to do with it. Or maybe he found out his brother had been murdered. Excuse me. Uh, this package was just delivered at the gate. It was for Professor Kemper. Oh, Thanks. A red carnation and a ticket to the concert at the municipal auditorium tonight. That's odd. Professor Kemper never went to concerts. Well, Mr. Marcia, well, this could be a rendezvous set up for the courier. Let's cover it. R7, as you see, next to the last wall. Mm-hmm. Woman on either side. Mm. You see anyone resembling the courier's description? No. No, I haven't. Not yet. Well, you'd better sit down anyway. I'll wait out here in the foyer. All right, sir. The first half of the concert passes without incident. No one attempts to contact Agent Taylor. Enjoying the music, Taylor? Well, I wasn't doing much listening, Mr. Mercer. Anything happen? All the women on either side of me are with their husbands. Both the husbands fell asleep. <laughs> well, I haven't spotted anyone that fits our description. Yeah, I guess I might as well go back. Sit out the rest of them. Again, Taylor waits. Again, no contact. Fifty minutes later, the concert is over. Taylor moves toward the aisle. Hello there. 
Why, hello. Very interesting concert. Yes, very. Of course, I have heard better performances, but for a local orchestra, it was not too bad. Well, they do the best they can. Would you care to join me for a drink? Oh, it's very kind of you. Shall we go out this side exit? All right. Go ahead. Now, you have something for me, huh? That's right. Here it is. Where is the film? What is this? It's a warrant for your arrest. I'm a special agent of the FBI. With the arrest of the courier whose job it was to obtain confidential data from Professor Kemper and the accomplice in the record shop, your FBI again effectively discharged its duty in protecting the internal security of our country. And now we bring you a special message from Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Hoover's message is, and I quote, The security of America will continue to be endangered by the relentless efforts of misguided zealots within our borders who, blindly following the dictates of their communist masters, pose a constant threat to every loyal American. Those in the web of espionage work ceaselessly to further their diabolical cause by seeking to obtain at any cost the vital secrets of our nation. This threat is a challenge to every patriotic American. I urge all of you to help preserve our liberty by immediately reporting to the nearest field office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation any information affecting the internal security of our nation. The success of the FBI in its efforts to protect our democracy depends on the wholehearted cooperation of every citizen. If you'd like to stop worrying about tomorrow and start living today, there's a neighbor of yours you really ought to meet. He's the man who knows how to help you take the uncertainty out of tomorrow simply through proper planning today. If you have the right plans, much of your worry is over. The neighbor we're talking about is your local Equitable Life Assurance Society representative. He's no farther away than your telephone. He's a friendly, helpful man who believes in helping you buy the kind of life insurance that serves your best interests. Why not get in touch with him today? Consult your local telephone directory for the name of your local representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Theft of Government Property. Its title, The Comic Strip Bandits. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Burt. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Herb Butterfield, Harold Dyronforth, Isabel Jewell, Alice Reinhardt, John Stevenson, and Chester Stratton. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The comic strip bandit on This Is Your FBI. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC.